Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Thanks for joining us. I'm Anna Manuel. Tomorrow, the 23rd Congressional District will officially have a new congressman. Our Maggie Hall has the latest on the congressman's swearing in and what people think about this upcoming term. Although Nick Langworthy won't officially be sworn in until tomorrow, the congressman-elect was ceremoniously sworn in in Elmira. I, Nicholas A. Langworthy, I, I, Nicholas A. Langworthy, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Okay. During the ceremonial swearing in, Langworthy assured constituents of his support of the Southern Tier. Because I know that there's a concern that uh, guys from Buffalo is not going to remember you know, people on this end of the Southern Tier. I could never forget people on this end of the Southern Tier. Local Frank Acomb is looking forward to hearing more specific goals for Langworthy's upcoming term. And I would just ask what his goals are. I mean, I know he's laid them out during the campaign, and I have all the confidence in the world with him. I know he's going to do a great job. Uh, but, you know, just kind of see maybe more specifics. It's easy to be generalized. Uh, in the campaign season. Now let's see, you know, day to day, daily Washington business. Mr. Langworthy will be sworn in tomorrow in Washington, D.C. The congressman elect currently serves as the chair of the New York State Republican Committee. The congressional seat is currently held by Joe Zeppelinski, who won a special election in August. Zeppelinski told me that the two offices have been actively communicating about this transfer of power. You can tune in tomorrow for more on the congressman swearing in. Maggie Hall, Big Fox News, Corning. New York Governor Kathy Hochul was sworn in on Sunday. The ceremony took place in Albany. Hochul is the 57th governor of the Empire State and the first woman ever elected to the office of New York governor. She became the state's leader about 16 months ago when Andrew Cuomo resigned over allegations of sexual misconduct. In November, the Democrat defeated her Republican challenger, Congressman Lee Zeldin, in a tight race. In her inaugural address, Hochul praised those who attended the first women's rights convention in the United States in Seneca Falls, New York, in 1848, which launched the women's suffrage movement. More than seven decades later, women got the right to vote. Radical, radical concept at the time, the right to vote. Women can't vote. If you read all the arguments, they're absurd. But since then, New York women have been the trailblazers for the rest of our nation. Governor Hochul took her oath of office on two Bibles, a family Bible and the state's Bible, which was borrowed from the FDR Presidential Library. It was originally owned by FDR's great-grandfather. More than 5,000 pounds of pasta recalled because of potential listeria contamination. According to the FDA, Caesar's Pasta has recalled Ofresco and Caesar's Frozen Manicotti. The recall impacts Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and Puerto Rico. Customers who have purchased the product have been notified, and no illnesses have been reported at this time. Investigators say they have their man, ruling out any other suspects in the brutal slayings of four University of Idaho college students. Dan Springer has the latest from Moscow, Idaho. Days after his arrest, 28-year-old Brian Koberger is awaiting extradition to Idaho, where he faces four counts of first-degree murder in the slangs of four University of Idaho students. He has been named as our suspect, and we believe he is the one that is responsible. Authorities tracked Koberger for four days before arresting him at his parents' eastern Pennsylvania home early Friday morning, roughly 2,000 miles from Washington State University, where he was enrolled as a criminal justice Ph.D. student and from the University of Idaho, where Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin were brutally killed. Koberger is set to appear in the Pennsylvania courtroom on Tuesday. He's expected to waive extradition and be taken back to Idaho. Once in front of a judge, the probable cause affidavit will be unsealed, revealing how investigators zeroed in on him. But it's believed genetic genealogy evidence pointed police to him. That means if we have enough data, if we have enough cousins, enough matches, we can eventually narrow it down to just one family and often just one individual. This, as authorities continue their investigation into the suspect, police already flooded with hundreds of calls. We're trying to build this picture now of him, who he is, his history, how we got to this event, why this event occurred. 
Koberger could be flown back to Idaho as early as Tuesday night and appear before a judge here in Lataw County, Idaho, as early as Wednesday. In Moscow, Idaho, Dan Springer, Fox News. A 19-year-old man arrested, accused of attacking three New York City police officers with a machete during the New Year's Eve celebration in Times Square. And this weekend, investigators went to his family home in Maine as they investigate. Asia Reed reports. Investigators spent New Year's Day in and out of Trevor Bickford's family home in Wells. Neighbors like Steve Isles kept an eye on what was happening. Uh, it's just kind of hard to believe. I was just shocked. You know, it's, um, you know, Walls is a very small community and, and you think, you know, did, did this really just happen here? According to police, the 19 year old took the Amtrak train from Maine to New York on December 29th. Police say Bickford attacked three officers with a large knife on New Year's Eve. All were sent to the hospital. They say Bickford was also sent to the hospital after an officer shot him in the shoulder. The attack happened just after 10 p.m., blocks from the Times Square New Year's Eve celebration. It was outside the high security zone where people are screened for weapons. In Maine, records show Bickford lives on Alpine Drive. According to neighbors, Bickford graduated from Wells High School in 2022. Isles says the suspect has two brothers, all of the boys were wrestlers and described them as a kind family. He says the Bickfords are quiet and keep to themselves. My son Andrew uh, went to high school with the boys. They weren't really close. Uh, they weren't close friends or whatever, but Wells has, you know, a really small school system. So, uh, you know, everybody kind of knows everybody. Community members say the news was a shock. A woman who lives nearby says she wonders why the suspect committed the crime. Oh, this is insane. I'm, I'm like blown away to think so close from home that someone would like go all the way to New York and commit these crimes. Law enforcement officers continue to investigate, trying to figure out a motive and if it was a terror incident. In Wells, Asia Reed, Fox 23 News at 10. A respected and beloved papal leader lies in state, while dignitaries and the public come to pay their respects. The body of the late former Pope Benedict XVI lies in repose in St. Peter's Basilica. New Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney came to honor the late pontiff Monday. Benedict will be in repose for three days before his funeral in St. Peter's Square on Thursday. The Pope Emeritus died Saturday at the age of 95. In 2013, he was the first pope in 600 years to resign his leadership. You may want to make hydration your New Year's resolution. A new study suggests staying hydrated may slow down aging and decrease the risk of disease. The study analyzed serum sodium data from thousands of people over several years. Higher serum sodium levels can indicate someone is less hydrated. And participants who had higher sodium levels had an increased chance of developing chronic diseases and showing signs of aging than those with lower sodium levels. The study says more research into the exact link between hydration and aging is needed, but hey, it can't hurt for women to drink the recommended nine glasses of water a day and it's 12 for men. Still ahead, we have your complete forecast. Plus, this new year, real estate trends are making some gradual shifts. I'm Mallory Rivera in Washington with what economists say buyers and sellers can expect for 2023. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Good evening. We have continued these unseasonably warm conditions as we stepped into the new year. Now, our warmest temperature over this time period was on Friday with that high of 61 degrees. However, through the holiday weekend, we kept those temperatures very mild into the 50s, both Saturday and Sunday. And today we topped off just from those mid to uh, low 50s for highs again. So hasn't seen much movement and we'll continue to pull in those warmer temperatures as a warm front is on approach as we head into our Tuesday. Now, we were able to even see some areas of sunshine into the afternoon captured here at Binghamton's National Weather Service. But note that those overcast skies are moving in as we step through the overnight. And we are going to talk about some rainy conditions, but again, still keeping those mild temperatures through at least Wednesday as that warm front is going to lift north. Then the low pressure system associated with that warm front is going to make its approach towards the area. 
from Thursday into Friday. That's going to keep us under some isolated precipitation. Right now, not looking at much for organization, especially across the southern tier of New York when it comes to dealing with that potential of widespread precipitation, especially when it comes to maybe some mixed precipitation as there will be some cooling conditions as that low makes it set towards portions of the northeastern portions of the United States. However, although we're talking cooling, note that it is going to just bring us back to seasonal conditions as we've been under a very unseasonably warm pattern. So looking at that push of that warm front as we head into our Tuesday by the mid morning showers will move in and there will be some moderate showers into the afternoon and then we'll stay under some isolated to scattered showers through Tuesday night and then lingering throughout that Wednesday forecast as another troughing system will be pushing in causing for some of those showers maybe even embedded rumble of thunder can be ruled out especially with these warmer temperatures that are moving in with that system. Now as we look at rainfall accumulation through 7 p.m. on Wednesday another quarter or I should say three quarters of an inch upwards of an inch will be possible so with that snow melt that we saw with these warmer temperatures very saturated soils and times of wet weather note that more of these streams and creeks will continue to run on the higher side so keep that of a mention but when we look at the potential temperature wise underneath this rainy weather pattern we'll see temperatures still well well above average mid 50s again for our Tuesday looking warmer even farther off to the uh, west where there may be a few of those 60s popping up on the board but with these temperatures well above average note that our main precipitation type through Wednesday will be that rainfall again looking at mid 50s at least even upper 50s of a possibility there on Wednesday and then the changes start to come as we head into that Thursday forecast we'll start to see some pullback Thursday there will be more of just an isolated potential of some of those showers maybe sometimes of some wintry mix and then better chances will come as that low will be departing portions of the uh, of the Great Lakes which is going to send some of that wintry mix even some light snow showers as we step into the weekend forecast where our high temperatures will turn back into those 30s as well as even low temperatures starting to fall closer to the teens. As the Federal Reserve continues to work to get inflation under control, economists are expected to keep a close eye on the housing market. Madeline Rivera has more on the projected real estate trends for 2023 and what that means for sellers and buyers this year. Just days into the new year, and real estate experts are projecting the 2023 housing market will face another year of volatility, with mortgage rates expected to climb and national home prices forecasted to drop. But while 2023 is expected to remain a seller's market, forecasting trends are pointing toward a gradual shift toward buyers. It hasn't yet become a buyer's market, but by far, buyers have a lot more leverage today. We've seen the return of negotiations and, and uh, contingencies in sales contracts. Plus, with the Federal Reserve indicating a slowdown in rate hikes, signaling inflation appears to be tapering off and new 2023 financing programs entering the market, realtors say buyers can expect more options. There's a lot of creativity that can go on. Um, and it's just you just have to ask and, and have an agent and, and lending partners that are willing to discuss what, what's possible. 2023 is also projected to level off from remote work influenced home buying to more sales catering to hybrid work models. A hybrid arrangement allows people to move a little bit farther. We've seen Americans by and large take advantage of that. But for some prospective buyers, now is not the ideal time to buy. Jonathan Paul says he traded the idea of a mortgage for a more affordable mobile home. It's a lot easier on me and my pocketbook and it's easier for my dogs. They can play in a different park every day, see new things, hike new trails. Even though home prices are expected to go down this year, they rose so much during the pandemic that economists predict a drop now still won't be enough to completely wipe out the gains made over the past few years. In Washington, Mala Rivera, Fox News. Twitter's landlord is suing the social media company for not paying rent at its San Francisco office. Columbia Property Trust claims Twitter owes over $100,000 in rent, filing a lawsuit in California court. Two people familiar with the matter telling the New York Times that Twitter CEO Elon Musk is in the midst of renegotiating the lease as the company downsizes under his leadership. Musk also cut janitorial and security services, according to the Times, with some employees reportedly bringing their own toilet paper to the office. 
Well, listen up to this. It could cost you more to ship a package in the new year. FedEx is increasing its parcel shipping costs starting January 3rd. The rates will increase about 6.9% on average. Increases in rates could depend on services used, types of packages shipped, and destinations of deliveries. Larger increases will be made for deliveries that are longer distance. Shippers like FedEx are facing declining volume since the high of the pandemic. The IRS has new interest rate fees in place as of January 1st. The new interest rates by the IRS apply to individuals that owe the IRS and to those the IRS owes money to when payments aren't delivered on time. Rates for payments made in excess owed by individuals as well as taxes not fully paid will be 7% per year compounded daily. The IRS determines its interest rates quarterly. Still ahead, a new college course called the Do Nothing College Course is showing students ways to improve their mental health and overall well-being through self-care. That story coming up. Well, mental health challenges have been a growing problem on college campuses in recent years. A new Doing Nothing course is aiming to help students relax, unplug, and slow down. Aaron Mabin has that story. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Poetry, pillows, peace. When the blackberries hang swollen in the woods, in the brambles nobody owns. It is hard to feel stress while inside this Lawrence University classroom. Tread softly because you tread on my dreams. I don't remember the last time someone read poetry for me or the last time I read poetry. I also took a nap, which you know was totally permitted in the class and I'm glad it was. Because my body speaks to strangers. Those mesmerizing words, the cat naps, a soothing crochet Until creation. Not the reason why Diego Leon and his classmates signed up for Herring. this unique Hot course. Fish. While he waits, for a herring boat to come in. It seemed very unusual, so I really wanted to like make space to do nothing. Play that over. is exactly what it's this okay. class is called, the doing the nothing. Pages. The blue and the dim. This came from conversations that colleagues and I have been having for the last couple of years. Whatever you guys need. Professor Constance Kasser is its creator. We're seeing students being stressed out. All the time. Mental health challenges and, and have been a growing problem on college campuses man. in recent the years. Apples, Doing nothing cold. helps students relax, cold, unplug, dark, slow down. Deep, it teaches students self-care. The title of doing nothing close, is close. a little bit misleading in the fact that we're actually doing quite a lot. Every week is a little bit different. Classes have focused on Tai Chi, meditation, good sleeping habits, and more. There's no homework, no reading, no final exam. When I started reading the curriculum, it's like, oh, about time. It was definitely uh, overdue, especially you know, since the bombardment of social media. We talked with doctors Hamanshu Agrawal and Cassie Ferguson at the Medical College of Wisconsin about how this course could benefit students today and for years to come. If you should dip your hands in. giving students the tools they need to continue those practices beyond that hour that they have together, and it's really creating a, a community. There's a clarity that comes with sitting still and allowing your mind to be quiet. Dr. Um, Agrawal is a child psychiatrist. Of, uh, Dr. Ferguson also, has improved access to mental health there. services at the yeah. medical college. Both know the power of mindfulness. I think it allows us to be present for other people in a way that we're not typically able to. On this well, day, students brought blankets, leaving exact. behind worries and one other thing. Our phones are a no, big, big no in the class because we're, we're always using them. Derived from the rocky breath. Lessons from a one-hour weekly course. It's taught me to make space for things. It's taught me to you stood up in the water. understand that mindfulness is important. That hopefully lasts. When we're rested, when we like are happy, we make a better impact on the people around us. Distant deeps or skies. Long after the semester sky. ends. Burnt the fire of thine eyes. In Appleton, Aaron Mabin, Fox 6 on News. On what wings dare he aspire? Stay with us. We'll be back with more. 
And we want to leave you with a smile. Lego starts off the new year releasing six new Super Mario sets. Now, this is part of Lego's collaboration with Nintendo, creating the collections together since 2020. Prices for the sets range from $5 to $65. One set, based off a pink walrus, includes more than 550 pieces. And that's sure to keep the children building it occupied. I'm Harriet Wallace. Thanks for watching.